Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you all to our 10th North American edition of the Sustainable Cosmetic Summit. How can I save myself in a way that saves the world? And how can I save the world in a way that saves myself? One of the really interesting topics we've been learning a lot about here is the idea of a traceable supply chain. Consumers now, they want to know so much more than uh, just what's in the product. They want to know how it was produced all the way down to a farm level. Today I was talking about regenerative organic agriculture. So basically, how can we farm in a way that addresses some of our world's greatest problems? Issues like climate change, issue, issues like fair trade and fair labor, and issues like animal welfare. This is a strong regeneration activity or program in place, that resource is no longer there. And that's what happened with the Indian sandalwood industry. Summit has been quite inspiring for me. I think we had a big range of new innovative solutions that can help to make the industry more sustainable. And I also think it showed how the cosmetics industry can be a leader in, in bringing more sustainability to the wider industry. When you think about raw material sustainability, for example, there's a lot of good, good things happening in the industry, which I think can also inspire other industries which are relevant for raw materials, such as um, food and beverage industries, for example. Topics that have been most interesting for me has been the switch from fossil-based to nature and plant-based um, ingredients in the industry, which is a great opportunity to actually improve the sustainability of formulas and of the products. Um, and at the same time, there are both risks and opportunities in that. So this will be the first hemp on hemp on hemp product in the market. The packaging is made out of hemp, which reduced our, um, they're actually biodegradable. Also, in addition to that, the good stuff inside, the formula, is also made out of cannabis sativa seed oil. And the actual wipe is also, does not harbor bacteria and is biodegradable because it's also made out of the cannabis plant. I come here to, to get refreshed on, on inspiration and, and new ideas that are out there. I particularly enjoyed the session by Dr. Ellen on functional skincare ingredients and, and her time in the jungles and learning about um, plant-based materials that she's now providing scientific evidence for and, and claiming some of those um, functions and, and how we can bring them to, to the consumers. We're approaching a level where natural and organic and sustainable ways aren't, aren't exactly just a niche market anymore. I'm going to show you about how DuPont has approached how to help and contribute to those sustainable goals. We found that the life cycle assessment is the best tool to assess environmental um, impact of a product. The easiest way to think about engagement is that love is a two-way street. You get some, you get some. You can't talk back to a magazine you're talking to yourself. You can't talk to a television, people call you crazy. But on social media, you can respond to a brand. You can reply to their comments. You can engage with them. So basically marketing that popular kid in school using the fact that they're popular and enabling passive marketing. These kind of events are great because you can learn so much from so many different people. You know, there were talks, you know, everything from the details of packaging design to marketing to uh, ingredients and everything in between. The main points of my presentation today, we're talking about how what so sustainable brands can learn from social first beauty brands. And we have distilled it down to are the way that social first beauty brands understand their consumer, the way that that understanding of their consumer lets them be bold in their decision making. As sustainable companies are doing all of those things, if they do them in ways that, uh, and present them in ways that are really friendly to social media, We've seen people get really, really excited about brands and it, it, it goes a long way to help create excitement around sustainability. By no means do we believe we have all of the answers or everything figured out. And I appreciate uh, all of you sharing some best practices that we'll take back and in, in implement on our journey. And I hope that I can do the same for you. So we created this bottle that is automated, put together with two halves that you see broken apart here. Uh, and then we mixed it with a mineral, uh, a mineral combina a combination of minerals that, uh, that help it to dry. So the liner inside is 80% uh, post-consumer recycled uh, material that's between 60 and 70% less plastic than a standard Boston Round bottle. I was really quite impressed with the members that are here that are really interested in data. 
scientific data, whether it be from the sustainability perspective, from the supplier um, perspective, from a farm level, to really embrace data and help data make good decisions for their business. We really have to embrace change. You know, we've learned things here from the importance of stem cell, from understanding how different generations embrace different information and how to appeal to them, um, the importance of packaging, the importance of weather patterns at the farm level, and the importance of really everybody being on the same page with driving sustainability, not only from a profitability standpoint and not only from uh, making sure consumers are getting what they wanted, but with regards to social impact, really making a change for farmers' lives and for factory workers' lives and lifting people out of poverty and really impacting um, you know, the bottom line of our businesses. So if you look across these um, five categories, you'll see uh, the derivatives and the risks associated with them. We really take a scientific approach and turn it into a, a commercial proposition. I think it's interesting that no matter uh, which organization you're from or what part of uh, uh, the cosmetics business you're in, whether it's formulation, whether it's information, whether it's digital, whether it's packaging, um, that I think we all uh, are very conscious about sustainability and trying to make this world a better place. Uh, and, um, and the fact that we're all thinking together, we feel like we're part of this community. Another serious problem will be uh, oxidation. Let's look at uh, the conventional packaging. It still has the same problem with uh, through the air, uh, through the skin, and uh, through the plate. We've had some very interesting discussions over the last two days. We've had sessions about new technologies, marketing best practices, and green materials. Key takeaway for me is that sustainability is no longer a fad, it's no longer a trend, it's becoming more and more mainstream. Beauty companies are realizing that the way they do business has to change, they have to incorporate sustainability in the way they produce their products but also the way they market their products. And we hope to continue these developments in upcoming editions. We hope to see you again soon.